what is going on guys welcome back to j will trap tv hey guys we are back with another episode breakdown today we're doing season two episode five of raising canaan this episode is called what happens in the cat skills okay so i actually really like this episode a lot of interesting things going a lot of more information and characters introduced so i'm really looking forward to recapping this with you guys let's go okay so we start the episode off with we see that snitch the the crackhead snitch guy who was telling about uh canaan's boys selling the the blue caps last season so he goes into a building, he goes up and he's looking for crack. Uh, Marvin is behind the door and Marvin comes out in some cleaning gear. He gives the guy some crack. The guy takes off, but Marvin tells him that they're closed today. Uh, it looks like Marvin is cleaning out that corpse, pulling it out the drywall, spraying it down with some Lysol and putting it into a bag. So he's in this room cleaning up this corpse and he doesn't want the crackheads coming upstairs seeing what they're doing. In our next scene, we're back at Rock's house. Uh, Rock is sitting over Kanan and wakes him up. And he's a little disturbed, and she tells him that they're going to go camping. Uh, they're going to go camping at the Catskills. I guess this is some place they've been before. She wants to do a mother-son tip, just the two of them, so they can spend some quality time together. Outside of Rock's house, we see that there's two Italians, and these guys are well behind enemy lines. They are deep in Jamaica, Queens, and they are at Rock's house. This is not good, and it shows these guys are really trying to pick apart Rock's organization to figure out what is going on. Uh, they're talking about, they're, they're watching and they, one of them says that a uh, few colored people move close to him and they don't bother him and they don't, and he doesn't bother them. And then the other guy, his name is Dominic. He asks, oh, well, how would you feel if, you know, they came home one, if your daughter and one of those, uh, one of the black folks came home one day and said that they were together. And he's all like, uh, I don't know, Dominic, I don't know what I would do. And then he's all like, oh, I bet you knocked that little dude's teeth out. So these guys... You know, these, these mafia dudes, I don't know if you guys watch The Sopranos, but one of the things I hate the most about The Sopranos is there's like a lot of racism in the show. And I don't know if it would fly now, if it came out now, but going back and watching that show, it was just so annoying to hear like all the little racial edits they would say about black folks. And it was just totally okay. But so yeah, um, these dudes are pretty racist. So we go back inside Rock's house and now Kanan is in Juke's room. He's asking her, are you going on this camping trip? And she's like, no, your mom said that's between you and her. So that's what you guys are doing. Kanan tells Juke that he looked Howard in the eye and had that same feeling that she described in the last episode, that familiar feeling. So Kanan is getting closer with Howard and I don't know where this is going to go, but Juke tells Kanan that Howard is not his father and that he is just playing this game to get close to Rock and to stay away from him. Kanan also says that he's not really on a cool level with his mom and he doesn't feel like she's being honest with him. And then she comes into the room, tells him to hurry up and uh, he heads out. Juke jokes about Kanan getting poison ivy. Before the end of the scene, we see Juke pick up the, the track that Crown gave her and she starts listening to it and she can hear Zisa's voice and she gets upset and leaves. So the next scene, we're at a radio station and Lou and Crown are talking to what seems like a radio executive about some other new artists. Uh, primarily Zisa, and they're saying pretty much she's gonna blow and that the, you know they, they want his support and et cetera. And it, it looks like Lou's coming in a little heavy. And then Crown kind of interjects and says, well, Lou's just a money man. Um, I'm really handling the business. And then the guy, I don't know, there's, it seems kind of weird. The guy doesn't seem to want to talk in front of Lou. And he says like, oh, well, you know, my turns are going to cost something. So then they go outside and they pretty much talk shit about Lou while he's sitting in the room. Uh, Crown says like, yeah, man, I almost laughed at what that guy was saying. And uh, Lou's, out, Lou's looking in and he knows that, that something isn't right and that Crown isn't being a full partner with them. We go back to the Thomas house and we're outside now. Uh, we're pretty much loading into the vehicle. Marvin drops off this car and he tells Rock that he sprayed it down. So I think that dead body is in the trunk of this car. So I, so I think that dead body's in the trunk of this car and they might dump it when they go camping as we've seen inside the trailer. Marvin asks Rock what they should do about New Jersey. Rock tells them to not operate in New Jersey until she comes back. Marvin says, hey, we should just shut the whole thing down. And Rock says, no, because we shut that down, they're going to start sniffing around other places. She says they're like sharks, and once they smell blood, they start circling around all their stuff. And this is true, because we got we got these uh, Bocelli members out watching us right now, and we don't even know about it. So now we switch scenes, and we have Crown and Lou leaving the radio station. They are in a parking structure, and Crown, uh, Lou is walking ahead, and he's walking pretty fast. He looks upset. Uh, he's upset about what just happened in there. And Crown is kind of talking down to him saying, hey man, you gotta be, you gotta be more finesse. You were coming at him too heavy. You gotta, you gotta have, you know, you, you gotta sweet talk him. And then all of a sudden we just see Lou turn around and punch Crown in the face, blood coming out. Crown lands on the ground. Crown reaches up and tries to like 
use Lou to stabilize himself, and then Lou moves his hands and says, don't touch me. And Crown says, and, and like, I really like this scene. Crown says, hey, man, I'm tired of you putting your hands on me, bro. And then, and then Lou says, well, what you going to do about it? And then Crown pulls out the pistol. And then Lou just looks, and he goes like, hey, if you're going to pull that out, you better use it. And then Crown says, who said I wasn't going to use it? You know, my favorite line. And oh, my God, I feel so stupid pumping up that line because Lou just walks up to him, and he goes like, me. I said you're not going to use it. I'm like, oh, my God. Then he just walks away, bro. And, and look, Crown could have shot him right there in the back, looks around, and he doesn't do anything. This dude is really scared of Lou, man. Why you pull that pistol out, Crown, and didn't do nothing, bro? You had me pumping you up in the trailer. So now we got Kanan and Rock driving to the campsite. We see a police car pass her. And remember, we got a dead body in the trunk. So it's like, oh, man. So yeah, they pass her. Rock asks uh, Kanan if he has heard about Davina. If you guys remember who Davina is, who, she is the woman or Kanan's love interest in the first season. She was taking care of her little sister by herself and... Uh, eventually, uh, Child Protective Services got called and they got taken out of their house. Kanan tells Rock that Davina's down in South Carolina. Rock asks Kanan if there's another girl, and Kanan, at first, is a little shy, but he does tell her about Kareen that he met at Famous's apartment. Kanan ends the conversation a little hostily by asking if he can turn the radio back on. We now have Marvin and Renee getting lunch. Renee says she wants to meet outside the group because she's noticing that Marvin is having trouble opening up in the group. Marvin says that he doesn't want anybody in his business, but Renee says that he needs to keep his end of the bargain and that she might have to go to the judge and let him know that he's not speaking up in the group. Marvin says that he goes in, he behaves, he listens to everything he says. He doesn't need to talk. He's showing up and he's 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 meeting his obligations for the group. And he asks her like, "What do you want? Like, what else do you want from me?" And Renee asks him to tell her something that makes him feel a little uncomfortable. Marv tells Renee that he has a daughter named Juke and that they have a strenuous relationship and that he feels like she's never going to forgive him. He doesn't tell her that he choked Juke out, but he does say that he did something unforgivable, nothing nasty or anything like that, but just something that she will never forgive him for. We now have Rock and Kanan arriving at the campsite. Rock goes in to reserve a campsite with a fire pit. Kanan, Kanan runs into a store clerk named Hannah and they kind of hit it off a little bit. Rock doesn't seem to like Kanan talking to this girl. And he's just giving her late, she's just giving him side eyes the whole time and looking back, making sure nothing happens. We're now back on the streets and we see Juke roll up on Zisa. She throws the tape at her and she says, yo, why are you stealing my music? And then Zisa says, I didn't even know this was your song. Lou gave me this song. Once, once Juke hears that Lou was the one that gave her the song, she's satisfied and she starts to leave. And Zisa tells her that she doesn't need to steal anyone's music, that she has her own music. Uh, looking at this, I, I was a little concerned because I, I thought these guys were going to be friends or possibly get into like a relationship together. But it, now it seems like they're kind of rivals. I, I think that Juke has a lot of... Is, is you know doesn't really dislike her but, but but dislikes the idea that you have to have this kind of look zisa's look to be uh successful in music we now come back on marvin and he's over here spying on tony if you remember tony she was the club owner in the last season she also turned ci and tried to snitch on marvin towards the end of the season as marvin is watching tony a cop pulls up behind him and he knocks on his window he tells marvin that he doesn't recognize him and he makes it his job to know everybody who hangs out in the town. He thinks it's a little suspicious that Marvin's hanging out around this area. Marvin assures him that he's just hanging out eating a bag of chips and that he doesn't have to go anywhere and the cop just ends up leaving him alone. Tony starts to drive off and Marvin follows her. Kanan and Rock now arrive at the cabin. So Kanan and Rock arrive at the campsite. They start unloading their items. We can see that the mafia guys, Dominic and Jimmy, are following them. This is getting crazy, man. Are they gonna come and attack Kanan and Rock while they're camping? We now come back to the studio where Juke confronts Lou, asks if he gave Zisa her song. And Lou immediately says, instead of answering the question, he asks if Crown was the one who told her. And Juke says yes, but she would have found out anyway. Lou goes into this thing where he says that certain songs are for certain artists, and he thought this song worked really well with Zisa. He put it on, and it just worked. Juke takes this and says, is she not beautiful enough to sing the song? And Lou says no, and they had that same conversation they had two episodes ago. Lou ultimately apologizes and says that he should have asked her before giving up the song. He also throws in that there's nothing wrong with getting a writing credit. This just pisses Juke off even more and she leaves. In the next scene, we see that Detective Burke is questioning Howard's prostitute, Andrea. She's searching for info and she threatens to tell Child Protective Services about Andrea's son and that she's a prostitute and that she's not taking care of him and that he will get taken away. This freaks Andrea out, and Andrea decides to give up information on Howard. Andrea tells Burke that Howard doesn't remember the shooting, 
but also that he has a son, but she doesn't give up the name. If you look at this scene, it looks like Bert knows who it is. He doesn't say anything, but if you, just the way that camera zooms in on her, you can tell. He spends so much time with Kanan. She sees him all the time. I think she knows. We, we now go back to the camping scene and Kanan and Rock are talking about how boring camping is. Kanan's saying that hiking is the same thing as walking and he can do that back at home. Rock asks about like swimming. Kanan says he doesn't want to do that. Rock asks about hunting. He doesn't want to do that either. Uh, we see that the Italians are setting up shop in a cabin right next to Rock's cabin and they're just kind of keeping an eye on them. Kanan says he's going to go to the store to get a soda. The, the boss mafia guy, Jimmy, he, he now says that he's going to take a shot at Rock and he tells Dominic to go follow Kanan and to keep him distracted. Kanan runs into Hannah and she seems like she's romantically interested in Kanan. Jimmy, the mafia guy, tries to sneak up on Rock. He's out moving through the bushes with a pistol. He steps on a twig and this uh, alerts Rock and has Rock start looking around. But she thinks that Kanan's lurking in the bushes trying to scare her. She calls up to Kanan and says it's not funny and to come out, but Kanan doesn't come out. As Rock is calling out to Kanan, it looks like Jimmy is lining up the perfect shot to kill Rock but then some other campers show up and this stops them from shooting her. These campers are looking for some wood supplies and Rock tells them to go ahead and take as much as they want. And then she says she's gonna go look for Kanan. Jimmy doesn't take the shot because he doesn't want to alert the other campers. We now switch to a scene with Hannah and Kanan smoking a blunt. They're having a good time and they're really vibing. She asks them some questions about the city and Kanan, you know, gives her that, you know, Kanan charm. Kanan goes in for a kiss and this dude Dominic comes out and totally cock blocks Kanan. As he does this, Rock walks up right behind him and says, yo, don't talk to my son like that. As uh, Kanan and Rock walk away, Rock tells Kanan not to mess with white girls. It'll get you killed. And Dominic tells Hannah that if she were his daughter, that he would lock her up forever. So this guy, okay, so if you remember in the beginning of the episode, he was all like, hey, well, how would you feel if, you don't want, if your daughter started dating one of these black guys? So this dude has like a phobia of like, any white woman dating a black dude, kissing them or touching them, anything. This just freaks him out. Hannah gets upset at uh, Dominic for the way he approached her and she calls him a dick. Dominic goes back to the cabin. He sees that Jimmy was not able to kill Rock. He asks what happened. Jimmy tells him that there were some other campers that came out and he didn't want to take the shot while they were around. Dominic says, why don't we take Kanan and Rock out at the same time? And then Jimmy tells, and then Jimmy tells Dominic that, hey, that's against the mafia rules. We don't kill kids. It's bad for our conscience. It's bad for business. It's just bad for everything. We don't kill kids. And, and, and you know, I like that the mafia points out, you know, some of the rules that they don't kill children, you know, because if you remember Lou shot D Wiz and that was just terrible. At least the mafia, they have like some, you know, some level of honor. So, so now we have Rock and Kanan sitting around a fire. They're making s'mores and they're drinking a little bit of liquor. Rock tells Kanan that she brought him out here to get an idea about how he feels, what's going on in his head, if he's ready to take over the organization. She tells him that he's the heir and that it's ready for him if he wants it. Kanan, you know, before we thought that Kanan didn't want to do this life, in, in previous episodes, Kanan was saying that he didn't want to really take over the organization, but now he says that he does. Rock says that there should be no secrets between her and Kanan, no side hustles, nothing. They should tell each other about everything. Kanan hits Rock back and says he wants that reciprocated. He says that he wants her to share everything with him too. Rock says, all you gotta do is just ask. So we still got some, you know, dishonesty because you know Kanan has a lot of burning questions on his mind that he wants to ask Rock, but he just isn't doing it, you know? And I thought he was gonna ask her, well, is Howard my father right there? But then the scene ended. We switched scenes there. Now we're back at the Thomas house outside. It looks like Howard doesn't know where Kanan is and he's sitting outside waiting, watching Rock's house. We see Juke walk up and he gets out the car. He confronts her and he asks her where Kanan is. He says that he's been paging him. And then Juke says, she doesn't know. And then she keeps it pushed and goes inside the house. Rock and Kanan drive into the forest. They get out the car and Rock shows him the body in the trunk. She tells him to get some shovels so they can dig a hole and then dump the body. We switch back to the studio. Fame comes into the studio. Fame starts rapping and it sounds mediocre at best. And Lou is just not interested. Fame starts begging for studio time. And in the middle of begging for studio times, he starts dishing on the Jessica and Crown situation. He tells Lou that he was bringing her home late and her hair was all messed up and fluffed up and all kinds of suspicious things. Lou tells Fame that he already knew about this, which is weird because I didn't know he knew that they were doing it, right? So maybe he just played it off, but he tells Fame that, yeah, go write some rhymes. It's not about, it's not about Jessica, it's not about Crown. Write some rhymes, do the work, and he'll get them in the studio. Fame leaves and Lou looks pissed. He looks at that mural and he is just, it looks like he's ready to tear down Bulletproof Records. 
or at least half of it. In our next scene, we see Juke. She's in the church with her mom, Kenya. Kenya is singing. Juke is watching. Guy, uh, some some little dude walks up. You know, little little dude walks up on on Juke, and she you know she got her hair down. You know, so she looking, you know, she looking like a you know a fine little dark skinned lady. And this dude tries to get at her. You know, he's saying he's praying that she can get her digits. And for a second, it looks like Juke might have about to give him the number, but then nah, Juke plays him. Well, she didn't play him. She just kind of curves him a little bit. And then uh, Kenya calls Juke up to come sing. She's talking with the head pastor. And she, uh, she's saying that Juke is blessed with the same voice as her. And uh, they should hear her sing. So uh, they allow Juke to sing. And she does an amazing job. Everybody's happy. And she gets a standing ovation. We now have a scene at Howard's house with Howard and Andrea. Andrea is letting Howard know about what happened with Burke. And how she got pulled in. And the questions they're asking her. Howard asks, what, what did she tell her? And she lets, uh, she tells Howard that she told Burke about his son. And this gets Howard really upset. And he pretty much kicks her out. We go back to Marv and he looks like he's still following Tony. He looks like he followed her to his mansion. He's looking on at her and her new husband. Uh, he drives by. And just before the scene ends, we see that cop's police car, the one that kind of tapped on his window earlier, he is still following Marvin. So this is not good for Marvin. Marvin, please don't slip up, Marvin. Marvin, don't slip up. Don't do anything criminal. We switch back to Caden and Rock. They're preparing to go. It's the next day. And Rock tells Caden to go return the keys. As Kanan's going to return the keys, he sees Hannah again, and they they kind of talk, and you know, these they've been vibing all episode. So they kind of walk into a room, and it looks like they're about to do it, maybe, right? But we also got the Italians uh, still lurking in the shadows, and Dominic is following Kanan. We see now that Rock is alone, that Jimmy is going to take another shot at her. Jimmy walks into the cabin with his pistol out and he's looking for Rock, but Rock gets the drop on him and puts a knife to his throat. We also see Kanan start fighting Dominic at the same time. So the action is this amp. Rock and Kanan are, I would say, maybe half a mile within each other in different places dealing with different threats. Rock tells Jimmy that she's gonna have to take him out because if she doesn't take him out, that they're gonna keep on coming. At this point, Hannah runs into Rock's cabin and she tells Rock that Kanan is about to be killed. Rock knocks out Jimmy with the knife and she starts running towards Kanan. We go back to Kanan and he's fighting with Dominic. Dominic gets the advantage on Kanan and he wins the fight. He knocks Kanan down, he pulls out his pistol and he's about to execute him. Rock runs in and she has a knife, but she is not moving fast enough to stop Kanan from getting shot. Next thing you know, Jimmy comes in behind Rock and shoots Dominic. Obviously, Jimmy shot Dominic because he doesn't believe in killing kids. It's against the mafia code. And he was doing so to stop Dominic from making that mistake. Dominic is pissed. He's yelling at Jimmy just to shoot everybody. Kanan picks up, Kanan picks up Dominic's gun and points it at Jimmy. Rock says that Sal and her organization are gonna be coming to a deal soon. Jimmy needs to collect Dominic and they both need to disappear. Jimmy asks, what about Hannah? Is she gonna snitch? And then Rock says, Rock, and then Rock looks at Hannah and says that both organizations will come after her people if she says anything. Hannah seems to get it, and she doesn't look like she's going to snitch. After, after Rock and Kanan escape, they're driving off, and adult Kanan jumps in on the monologue. The funny thing to me, though, is, is in, you know, Kanan asks, who are they? And they just got to this thing where they were saying they weren't going to keep secrets from each other. First question Kanan asks her, she dodges the question, doesn't tell him what's going on. So, you know, Rock, Rock really needs to, like, kind of work on this dynamic because I think the, I think in the end... Kanan is going to kill Rock. I think that something's going to happen and he's going to have to kill her. And I, I don't know what it is, but at this point, their, their relationship is kind of splitting because Rock isn't honest with Kanan about anything. We still got Scrappy who got killed by her and she told him that he committed suicide. So what are my final thoughts on this episode? Um, I, I, I thought this episode was good. I thought the action in it was great. That scene when Kanan was fighting and Rock was uh, had the guy by the throat. You just kind of didn't know what was going to happen in that scene. That, that felt really good. The action and pacing of that was really good. I'm also really concerned about Marvin. Um, what's going on? We got the cop following him. Why is he? Why, what? I don't even know why Marvin's following Tony. Why is Marvin following Tony? Does anybody know why Marvin's following Tony? What is going Marvin, get over it. Get over it. You got Renee over here. She's looking good, man. Okay. And Crown and Lou. Guys, I'm worried, man. It seems now now Lou knows about the cheating stuff, or at least can put two two put two and two together on that on that front. And 
uh, Crown tried to stand up to Lou, but he couldn't. So Crown scared of Lou. Lou, I don't know. I don't know what Lou's going to do, man. And we got uh, Juke. Juke is hanging out with her mom. Uh, it looks like they're having a good relationship. What's going to happen when Marvin finds out about this? Rock knows about it, but what's going to happen when Marvin finds out? We did see in the trailer that that Kenya uh, punches Marvin. So there's going to be some conflict there coming up. So, all right, guys, make sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe, and put a notification bell so you know when I go live and make a new video. Thank you guys so much for helping out the channel. Tell everybody about it. Let's get some more subs. And if you're watching, guys, you're coming back, you're not hitting that sub or that like button, help me out. Come on, help me out, guys. It's not hard. It's free. It's free for your boy. Free for your boy. We're going to make this better so I can make better content for you guys, so I can get better stuff, get new bells and whistles and whatnot. All right, let's go. All right, guys, peace.